Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Fry Brothers Fishing. Today I want to discuss my 10 pound largemouth. It was actually 10.8 pounds, uh, 25 and a quarter inch in length. Um, really great experience. I happened to catch it from my kayak during my first online bass tournament. So that was just amazing. Uh, it was a really, really great experience. So we'll just dive right into it. I, I know you guys want to hear about this bass. Right off the bat, I started off days before and coming into the 2018 tournament season, I wanted to fish somewhere that was very familiar to me. And that's a really good place to start. If Even if you don't know that there's big fish in there, it's, it's a good place to start where you're fishing waters that you know. Um, my forage species happened to be bluegill for this particular body of water where I caught this bass. So these are some of the lures that I took with me to fish. Um, most of these ones that I'm showing you guys are my brother's custom stuff that hopefully will become available to you guys soon. Um, this is actually the jig that I caught it on. It did not have this Yamamoto double tail on it. Um, it had a 3.5 inch Bass Assassin paddle tail, which is a pretty subtle actual paddle. It was a quarter ounce head that I just showed you guys. Um, and that's a custom jig that I picked up at the Columbus Fishing Expo. It's a pretty basic jig. There's nothing too fancy about it. Um, it is hand tied. It's not a rubber band. I, I don't like those very much. I like the either wire wrapped or string wrapped jigs. Um, and it is kind of a finer skirt um, compared to like a basic or eagle. They kind of have that thick rubber. It's not really flowy. Um, that jig does have quite a bit of movement. That mixed with that subtle paddle tail was enough to get bit that day. So I don't go to the lake and just go straight to my first spot that I know it probably has a big fish somewhere around it. I go to south facing slopes and we're talking April in Ohio here. So I go to south facing slopes and you can key, on, key in on that either by using your phone and the compass. Uh, I tend to lean towards looking for green stuff in the spring. Uh, multiple rose, Japanese honeysuckle, some of the silver maples uh, are starting to turn green on the south banks. So that's a really good place to find out just how to pattern your bass, what your bass are doing that day. Um, I try not to go straight for the dinks. They don't really tell me that much. But once I start catching two, three, four pound largemouth, then I know what the big bass are doing. Um, chances are, in my opinion, that they're gonna be right with that class of fish. They're gonna be a little bit deeper than those um, two and three, four pounder. When I'm actually casting, I'm throwing towards the bank, I'm getting really, really close to the bank, and I'm working those steep edges, and I'm swimming that jig, and every now and then, boop, tick in the bottom, tick in the bottom. And then once I get to that depth where I'm comfortable and where I think that those bigger fish are hanging out, I will click my button and free spool down and just let it sit. It's already probably been seen. Um, I'm looking for clear water fisheries to uh, target this time of year. Um, that's just where I do the best. So and I followed all of these steps and now I'm ready to approach the best spots in the lake where I think these big bass are hanging out. When I'm approaching them, I am being as dead silent as I possibly can. Stealth is extremely important at this point. I'm paddling slow. I'm not rattling around my terminal tackle box. I'm not smacking my paddle up against things. Just be quiet. It's, it's so important. Another thing that is just is equally as important is having your gear ready. Retie your knots. That is a huge, huge deal. Retie your knots before you go chase a big fish. Um, if you just caught 20 bass two three pounders or however big they may be every time you set the hook that is shock loading especially if you're fishing braid setting the hook and shock loading static line which is what braid is there's no way that knot's going to hold if you hook up with a 10 pound bass it's just going to swim away and all you're going to feel is a little tick where your line breaks um so just just be ready be as ready as you possibly can try to think of every move that you can just like you're playing chess you know um but let's get to the actual part of the story where i catch the fish i cast out this jig and i do exactly what i said i was gonna do 
and I cast about two inches off the bank. It ticks a log, which was a nice touch, and then ticks the bottom again, ticks the bottom again, and right when I get to about 14 feet, I just drop it, nothing happens, nothing happens. So I pick it up, swim it again. I get to about 15, 16, 17 feet, somewhere around in there, and I free spool, and I drop it again. And a second goes by, two seconds goes by, and then boom, this unbelievable hit. It was just unreal that the power that this fish had. And I've, I've caught some big fish. I've caught plenty of fish that were over 10 pounds, but this particular largemouth was incredible, the power that this thing had. And I was so blown away by the force that I felt and how much my rod was bending that I was convinced that this was a channel cat. I saw this green flash after, I don't know, five or ten seconds of fighting this thing, realized it was a largemouth and my heart started pounding like a hummingbird. I could not believe that I had just hooked up with a bass this big. I had no idea how big it was at the time. Um, and I showed you this jig already, but I want to show you one other thing with it. When I pinned this bass, when I saw that big green flash, I saw something just amazing. Um, these weed guards on these jigs, when you get, we'll pretend my finger is the mouth of the bass, so a little bit of curve to it. Hopefully you guys can see that, but that weed guard is really pinning that sharp point of that hook. It really pins it to my finger and that's exactly what I saw when I saw that green flash and I knew I had that fish dead to rights and knew that I was going to land that fish. There was no way that that fish was shaking this jig out that was pinned like that with only a quarter ounce to throw around for leverage. There's no way. I knew I had that fish. And uh, I mean, I cold chills thinking about it. It was, it was one of the most amazing experiences I've ever had fishing um, and all that during a tournament. So... I just wanted to share a little bit of that information with you guys. Hopefully I answered some of you guys' questions that you sent me. Um, thank you guys for watching. I really appreciate it. Uh, subscribe, like, feel free to ask questions. I'll answer as many as I can, probably all of them. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video and thanks for watching.